trouble with you, said my manager, is that you suffer from stage fright. Terrible it is, he said. You look at yourself up there in front of an audience. And you're all terrified, you are terrified. I'm not, I said, I've done this hundreds of times. Hundreds of times, I said. It's like, I mean, it's like bread and butter to me. Bread and butter, it is. Stage fright. That's nonsense. Pure nonsense. Nonsense, he said. What do you mean, nonsense? Look at you, all quivery, all frightened, all tensed up, like. Beat up, introverted, you know, creased over. Like some animal in a cage. I don't, I said. You do, he said. I like my manager. He means well. He's a bit of a thug. But he means well, means well he does. He ain't a star like. He's no Rudolph Valentino or Sylvester Stallone. No Peter Sellers or Gregory Peck. I like my manager, I do. I tell him so. But here we are, I mean, here we are, it's Monday. Here we are on show 239. I count them. Show one, I count. Show two. So I know how much of this shit I've got to get through. 239, perhaps. No. Nope. 239 exactly. The jokes are terrible, worse than the actors. Stage fright, I ask. It's all bread and butter to me. Bread and butter, it is spread thinly with marmalade and a beer. English beer, of course. A couple of beers, whiskey if I need it. You're full of stage fright, he says. Full of it, he says. But he don't understand. He just don't understand. On Friday, that'd be show 237, Monday today, and we have Sunday off. On Friday, I'm up there, and it's act two, scene four, the long speech, the one with bottoms in it and sniggering. I get to line six, I mean, to line six, it's like this, nagging hurdle ever since I picked up the script for the read-through. Act two, scene four, my speech, line six. It's like a bloody hurdle to get over. If you don't get over it, you can't go round it. If you don't get over it, you can't get round it. You end up going back round and round. You end up going round and round until it does your fucking head in. They look at me, her all prim and pretty, him, been in so many shows he ships them out of his ass, and they can see I'm going round and round they can see I'm swearing under my breath they're like spectators at a cockfight willing me forward like those scenes in the deer hunter before he blows his brain out it's all sticky you see the words are all sticky I made it I took a deep breath and I made it the gun clicks and I'm still on stage. It's about carrying on, keeping going, believing you can make it, overcoming, even when you've been overcome by age and history and not making it, not becoming who you'd hoped to be, who you dreamed of being. It's about blundering through, winning against the odds. If you get to the last act, it doesn't matter how you did it. That's what Churchill would say or Genghis Khan. And now I'm back again, show 239. I see the light shining, the radio from the bed and breakfast echoes in my head and the landlady humming. Tell me why I don't like Mondays because they're shit, I think, because we don't need the boomtown rat to tell us. I'm in the wings, and the lights are shining downwards, they're filling the stage. I think I'd like them to drift outwards to capture the sweaty Monday evening audience. They don't know what it's like. They don't know a thing what it's like. 
I can make them laugh, I can make them cry, but I can't make them understand. It's my bread and butter, I tell the manager. He's my manager, he manages me. You've got stage fright, he says, as if he knew shit about anything, spitting on the pound notes he's counting out in the box office. Not many of them are mine, I know that for sure. And there's my cue, out I go, out into the crowd. Have you ever thought how like me you really are? Pretending to be fine, but shitting yourself and not able to tell anyone. Don't say you're not. Act two, scene four, your speech, line six. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Just around the corner, isn't it? Some bloody kid in the front row chomping co popcorn. Bastard, I yell. Bastard, I yell and tear off my laughter mask. I leave the dumbfounded cast like obelisks in an orangery. I stride into the backstage gloom. I find the stage door. I slam it behind me out into the cold. Cold. Cold night. They offered me head a garbler once. Or was it the doll's house? Some Ibsen play one or the other. The slamming door play, whichever it is. The one where Bernard Shaw said the door slammed across the whole of Europe. I was to be the bastard. I mean, really. I was going to play the bastard, the uncle, someone you owe money to, something like that, both perhaps, I can't remember. I know I like playing bastards better than making them laugh. It's your bread and butter, my manager yells after me, your bread and butter, into the unclapping night. I'll never play Ibsen now. Never. And in the cold park, by the riverside cafe, I'm wondering if it was raining when Nora walked out of her door. Ibsen doesn't say. You see, maybe she just went back to her dressing room. And maybe I should too. <laughs>